All right, boys, today we're gonna try and direct die a 7800X3D, again. Now this product here is another Thermal Grizzly product, but this one is more kind of like that super cool direct die on Intel, where the entire CPU cooler itself is the direct die. So theoretically, this one should be idiot proof and perform better. So what's the goal of today's video? Nothing really, this is more just for fun, just to see if this actually does anything. Now the, the problem with the AM dip and all that stuff will not be fixed by this product. That's more of a fabric DDR5 issue. The direct die here is more just to try and get the cores to boost higher. Now, my 7800X3D is already delitted, so we'll be comparing this thing against a pre-delitted one, not a stock one, right? Which is how you should test it anyway, because what's the point in testing it against a stock one, right? Now, just delitting the CPU and using liquid metal, we saw some pretty good gains out of that, right? So I'm hoping for 100 to 200 megahertz on this thing with the direct die. So on the old CPU, we're kind of hovering around 550, 5.1 gigahertz all core in a gaming load, right? So, so you can already see here, these four screws go into the AM5 socket, and then the CPU fits in here and it pushes the whole thing down, right? Oh yeah, you see, so there's a really long groove on the bottom here. You're gonna wanna match that up with the top here like this, right? So it's gonna actually go in like this. And then the rest of these grooves on the side all fit in between the capacitor banks on the chip, right? So that should be pretty straightforward to install. Other than that, it's a really nice looking piece. Seems well built. This is the non-RGB version. Obviously, this, this is the only version they actually had in stock on the website. But I'm assuming the RGB version would perform exactly the same, right? Okay, so that's interesting. The instructions actually say that this is optional and you should use this with a cryo sheet graphene thermal pad. Now, I have no idea why you would actually use a graphene thermal pad in between a direct die. That makes absolutely no sense. That would, prob that would probably perform worse than stock. Very strange. Anyway, we're gonna be using liquid metal like a normal person. So I probably won't be using this shield uh, type thing. Also, the capacitors all seem to have some kind of like conformal coating slash glue type thing on them anyway. So you don't, I'm not gonna worry too much about the liquid metal spilling over on this thing. That's pretty much it, honestly. The intake is here, it looks like, and not much else to look at. So let's go install it, YOLO, see what happens. But before that, this video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. They bought me this product so that I, I could bring this testing to you bias free. Thermal Grizzly did not sample me this product. It was purchased directly on their website. So if you like unbiased testing like this, head on over to the website framechasers.org, become a supporter, get access to the Discord, where all information in that Discord is curated and filtered, so there is zero misinformation about hardware. If you want to know how to overclock and optimize your PC directly from me, the highest tier of support has bi-weekly masterminds where we get together with all of the guys and we shoot the shit and I go over in-depth, step-by-step on how to overclock every single component in your PC and proper stress testing methodology. All the secrets, baby. All right, so anyway, here's the PC. We're just using a 360 mil AIO here. This is the one that comes with that RAM block from Thermal Take, right? But, but the CPU is delitted with liquid metal on it. So I'm gonna replace this 360 mil radiator with another 360, because I already have a custom loop in here. It should be pretty simple and straightforward for me to swap it all out. But I'll add another 360 in here, get rid of the AIO, and then we'll keep the D5 pump, right? But, so how we're gonna test this, all we're gonna do is I'm gonna run IDA here in CPU stress test, hit start. We're gonna look at the power draw down here, the, the power package. Then we're gonna look at the temperature of the CPU, and then we're gonna look at the clock speed of the CPU and what it can maintain, all right? So, then we'll know exactly if that thing does anything or not. So we're hitting it. Package is 80 Celsius, around five gigahertz. Five, four, nine, seven, five. 
and then package is about 68 watts okay so i've left this going for about five minutes now just to get the temperatures to normalize here so it looks like we're at about 80 celsius on the package we're doing about 68 watts of power draw and then the clock speed is kind of settled at 50 50 50 75 ish so not bad not bad so once again this is delitted with a stock ihs on it so it's performing quite well in this test but um now let's go do a let's close all this let's go do a shadow of the tomb raider and see what kind of fps we can pull out of this now the reason why we're using shadow of the tomb raider is because this game scales perfectly well with the 3dv cache so it's kind of like a perfect cpu synthetic score okay so here's the score 1080p low we got an average fps of 402 cpu render just keep track of these numbers here and then hi kitty look at you you want to say hi who's my good kitty hi baby hi who's my good kitty two more days of the cone and we're almost done yes we are so anyway keep track of these numbers here and then we'll go do the uh the direct die see what clock speed increase we can get and then see if this actually does anything okay so i got the aio out i put an extra radiator here and here and everything else is pretty much the same i guess now it's just this thing left let's throw her on all right, so uh, looks like that's it. It looks pretty sweet, actually. I kind of like it. So I'll just um, assemble the rest of the loop, meet you back upstairs, and then let's see what this thing's got. There we go. Nice little rig I got here. I got this um, this Bixky uh, Ram block going on there, too. It fits really nicely. But uh, just going to get these air bubbles out now. And we're Gucci. This thing should perform really well. Okay, so it posted, so far so good. Um, everything looks good, idle, idle temps look good. Let's run the test, exact same settings. Let's hit the start button here. Let's see. Oh yeah. 51.5, it looks like uh, that works really well. That's like, um, it's like a 15 Celsius drop. Wait, let's check the power. Power consumption, 67. It's the exact same. Voltage is the same. Yeah, wow. Okay, so this might actually have something to it here. So at the exact same settings then, it's where we're two minutes in now. At the exact same settings, we dropped about 15 Celsius on the package. And we got 100 megahertz for free, it looks like, without touching anything else. So, let me, let me stress test. Let me, let me push the core clock as far as I can off camera. And then we'll be back to see how high I can get this thing. Stably. Okay, so, I think we got this. I got it up to 107 BCLK. And we're actually voltage limited now, so I physically can't go any higher. You might be able to actually go higher um, if you flash one of the very old BIOSes where you could actually manually set the V-Core. But in the, I'm using the latest BIOS, so it's not going to happen. But let's see here. So we're actually at 5325. 53. 5325. So we're, we actually almost gained... 300 megahertz here that is quite significant 250 megahertz around 250 to 300 megahertz very very significant well i mean i don't know i guess let's go let's go run um shadow of the tomb raider and find out if it actually translates to anything but like 250 megahertz more and we're still like five to ten celsius less right so that is, I mean, 
It's a good product, man. It's it seems to it's it's doing what it's advertised to do, right? I actually got to reinstall uh, Tomb Raider because I corrupted my damn Windows trying to faffo with this thing. It's uh, she's finicky. This platform in general is pretty finicky. Okay, yeah. So here are the results. It's about a two percent increase. So we increased the BCLK by five percent. And in real FPS terms, you get about two, two and a half percent back. So that, that seems to line up. That makes sense. Also keep in mind one more time, this test was done against a delitted CPU, not a stock one. So if you're going to from stock to this, you might see more than 2%, right? And whether or not this product is uh, worth the money to you, there you go. I would say the biggest benefit, though, is the temperature reduction because you can run these fans basically completely silent now and it'll just run every game whisper quiet, right? So that's where my head is at with this one. Not so much the performance increase. Anyway, guys, so the verdict from me, thumbs up. The product does what it's advertised to do. Looks good in there. And uh, if you like to screw around with custom loops and all this stuff, then... Yeah, sure, why not? I think it's uh I think it's a good product. Anyway, guys, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all the YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below if you have a 7800X3D. That's direct die cooled. And what kind of performance gains you got out of it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to become a supporter if you like this content. Talk to you later.